Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is July 14th, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. Brandy Baton, a pregnant woman in Texas who was given a ticket for driving in the HOV lane, is fighting back with a claim that she should not be fined for driving in the lane reserved for vehicles occupied by two people because her unborn child counts as a person. Due to Roe v. Wade being overturned, the Texas Penal Code now recognizes the fetus as a person, and the woman believes her $215 ticket should be dismissed. Good catch, Brandy. In our post-Roe v. Wade world, I am honestly sick to my stomach every single day, wondering what we can do to correct this grave mistake. While U.S. President Joe Biden has used his limited power to sign an executive order aimed at protecting access to abortion nationwide, his efforts aren't enough. The truth is, repealing Roe versus Wade was not an attempt to preserve life of children. It was actually an attack on the livelihood and progress of women. Without federal protection of access to abortion services, some women are going to die in pursuit of legal abortions and some women are going to die at the hands of men who will be angry when women cannot easily access the abortion that they demand. It is a lose-lose situation. In other news, the number of Google searches for the word get a vasectomy has skyrocketed following the overturn of Roe versus Wade. In Florida, urologist Doug Stein, a popular advocate for vasectomies, told the Washington Post he went from receiving four to five vasectomy requests a day to 12 to 18 requests per day. Men like 27-year-old Thomas Figueroa say that he and his girlfriend have no desire for kids, so getting a vasectomy was always on his mind and the Supreme Court decision pushed him to finally do it. He said males getting a vasectomy eases the burden on women who have lost their constitutional rights to an abortion. He told CBS News that this is a way that men can protect their girlfriends or try and protect their partners. Smart move? I think so. A man voluntarily having a vasectomy does help women to avoid the emotional decision an unplanned pregnancy can bring. But should vasectomies be mandatory for men? While any man who is not sure he wants to have children can opt to have a vasectomy, I actually once urged women to demand mandatory vasectomies for men because I was angry. After careful considerations, I don't believe mandatory vasectomies are the answer anymore. Typically, when someone hurts us, we have an instinct to hurt them back in the same manner. So I can understand why a knee-jerk response to forced childbirth would make women want to turn the force right back on men. But in a world where we want true equality, if women want respect for our right to choose what happens to our bodies, we cannot turn around and demand control over men's bodies. It seems like the perfect payback, but payback is not what we need. We need equality and true effective leadership, which demands protection of human rights and fairness for all. In other news, Dr. Donna Matthews, a developmental psychologist and the author of four books about children, adolescence and education, believes there are four types of parenting styles. These are authoritarian parenting style, which is the boss, they're firm believers in control, providing strict rules for their children, tough enforcement of those rules and discipline. Permissive parenting style, the friend, parents who don't like to set or enforce rules for their kids. Neglective parenting style, which is a bystander, parents who are somewhat disconnected from their children and provide neither dependable warmth nor security and structure. And authoritative parenting style, the kind but demanding adult, parents who use positive reinforcement and reasoning rather than punishment providing their child with emotional support, comfort, and high expectations. While these parenting style archetypes help us to understand who we are as mothers, author Margot Mashal Bisnow believes we should take a deeper interest in our children and raise them to become entrepreneurs. Margot is the author of Raising an Entrepreneur, How to Help Your Children Achieve Their Dreams. And I am excited to have her on The Feisty today. Margot, welcome to The Feisty. Of all the ways a mother can influence her children, why is it that you think it's important for women to encourage our children to become entrepreneurs? Uh, Tiarica, I'm so happy to be on. It's a wonderful topic. 
And I just want to explain first that for me, entrepreneurship means starting something. It doesn't necessarily mean owning a business. You're an, entre- you're an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is, is an actor. An entrepreneur starts a band. An, an entrepreneur starts a restaurant. An entrepreneur starts a nonprofit. So it, an entrepreneur is anyone who starts something. And I just think it's a wonderful path for a lot of people. And I think one way that parents can really encourage it is when your kids are growing up, see what gives them joy. And then whatever that is, encourage them to do it 100%. It could be sports. So many of the people I talked to in my book, the successful entrepreneurs were big into sports when they were young, but it could be acting. It could be singing. It could be dancing, cooking, computers, even video games. It could be running for student government. It could be working on a nonprofit. It could be anything that makes them happy. And whatever it is that they're doing, encourage them to do it with every single thing that they've got and tell them how proud you are of them for their success in that. And if they and make sure that you praise them for their effort, not their success. Don't say, oh, I'm so proud that you won something. Just say, hey, that's good job. You know, do you think you what would you have done differently? How could you do it better? Do you think you could work harder? Do you think you could be more prepared? Encourage them to be proud of their effort and encourage them to take risks and never ever punish them for failure or tell them you're disappointed if they didn't succeed. Always praise them for how much work they did and their effort, that's just so important. And then the other thing is always tell them that you're so proud of them for their success in that. Don't trivialize it, minimize it and say, oh yeah, well, okay, you scored a basket, but how'd you do in your history test? Oh yeah, you know, okay, so you, you know, you, you're, I'm glad you, you're, you're, Art, little article got in the paper, but you know it's time to go study for science. Whatever they love, tell them how proud you are of that. And as they grow up, they'll begin to realize that their success in that area and their mastery of that area and their confidence of their success in that area, that could it could lead to something great and it could morph over time. It's not necessarily like, you know, they're going to be doing basketball their whole life or whatever, but the fact that they've gotten grit and hard work and focus and determination in one thing in their life will then transfer into another thing in their life. And as people grow up, especially women, like it's so important for them to be bold, courageous, confident risk takers, whatever they end up doing in their life. Thank you, Margo. You are right. It is important for us to teach our children to become risk takers for themselves and for others. This will lead to a population explosion of people standing up and making changes themselves instead of waiting for someone else to rescue them. Well, it's time for a break. The man who raped a 10 year old girl has been identified. A woman shares the story of how she overcame disappointment in love. We will explore these stories when we come back. Don't miss it. Announcing the Library Fairies Kids Stories and Folk Tales, a free weekly podcast at thelibraryfairy.buzzsprout.com or on your favorite platform that you find your podcasts. Join the community of kids, parents, teachers, and librarians who love to listen to dynamic stories and multicultural folk tales from around the world that foster fun, diversity, and self-esteem. Immerse children in a journey and the ancient art of storytelling, accompanied by an array of instruments, sound effects, music, and song. Parents and educators love the added benefit of the podcast promoting literacy, language, and cognitive skills in children. Turn on the podcast and let the stories take you away at thelibraryfairy.buzzsprout.com. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? Did you hear about the 10 year old girl in Ohio who had to cross state lines to obtain an abortion after being raped? The alleged rapist has been identified as 27 year old Gerson Fuentes of Columbus, Ohio. The 10 year old traveled to Indianapolis after a ban on abortion after six weeks into pregnancy went into effect in Ohio on June 24th following the U.S. Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. 
The Ohio law, which prevented the 10 year old from having a safe and legal abortion, has no exceptions in the case of rape or incest. The child was raped in mid-May and identified her assailant to Columbus police early this month after traveling across state lines. After his arrest, he confessed to raping the child. Gerson Fuentes was arraigned on a felony rape charge and was ordered held on a $2 million bond. If convicted, he could face up to life in prison. But is that enough? Absolutely not. As humans, our bodies are the only thing we truly own. Violating our ownership of self is atrocious and the damage is often irreversible. If we cannot feel safe within our own bodies, how can we ever feel safe outside of it? I firmly believe that all sexual predators and rapists should face an automatic death sentence. In other news, we're living the feisty life and with so many horror stories about men hurting women, sometimes we need a reminder that good men do exist. In today's edition of He's a Good Man, Let's hear from a woman who had a series of good men in her life as a child, yet when she became an adult, she completely gave up on love. Meet Fiona. Someone changed her mind. Hey, Fiona, do you know a good man? I grew up with good men. I've had good men all through my life, and I've just been really, really grateful. And I always tell women that um, they are there. And my grandfather was my best friend when I was growing up. And he would he, he would go on adventures with me. We'll catch buses and we'll go eat at street food food stands and just have a really good time. Um, my dad was an amazing man. He just loved us. And he would every day he would pray over us before we left for school. And it sounded really crazy at the time, but when he died, that was literally the one thing I missed. Um, and then when I moved to America from Australia, he would text me or email me every day for 20 years, every single day without fail to make sure I'm okay. And he would send me news articles and just tell me, you know, everything's gonna be great, everything's gonna be fine. He was my top cheerleader. So when he died, it just broke my heart. And, but today I wanna to talk to you about a really personal good man in my life, my husband, Bobby Fox. Bobby and I met when I was a vendor for, um, I was his vendor for his clinic and I didn't realize but he had an issue with his order and he kept escalating and escalating it and it got to me and I didn't want to talk to him because I didn't want to deal with an angry customer but he was really insistent and he came on the phone and he came on zoom and he was just as nice as nice can be and at the end of the call he said to me hey you know is it okay if I call you if I have questions so we exchanged numbers and for the next couple of years every six or so weeks he'll call me and he'd be like hey you know I want to tell you what I'm using your product for it's been so great the athletes love it I love it um, you're really changing lives and it was really interesting the thing he didn't know was every time he'd call was when I was thinking about giving up the business because it was too hard it was um, it, something was dragging me down. I was going through, I was going through a really nasty divorce and my life was just like, oh my God. I had left um, a marriage of 20 years and I swore when I went through that divorce, I would never date again. I would never share my life, never share my heart with anybody else because it was just devastating and heartbreaking. And one day Bobby calls me and he says, hey, I have a question for you. Um, can I take you out for dinner? And I'm like, maybe, but I'm really, really glad that I agreed to go on that dinner with him because everything I had ever wanted um, and hoped for in a marriage and in a partnership, I have now. And it is warm, it is safe, it is loving, it is fun, it is happy. Um, people who see me, they're just like, we know he's a good guy because you just smile and you always have a smile on your face when you talk about him. The best thing about him is that he lets me be who I want to be, who I think I can be, and he's my biggest cheerleader. So there are just good, good men out there, and I know he's super fabulous because he raised a good man himself. Um, our son is fabulous, and a lot of young athletes come through our clinic and they will still message him and go, hey, Bobby, can you help me with this? Hey, Bobby, what's your advice for this? So that's my great guy. And I'm really, really glad he's in my life. 
Bobby Fox, you are a good man. Thank you so much for loving Fiona and giving all of us the assurance that good men do exist. Well, thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty. 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 Welcome to the Feisty. feisty. Erica. Welcome to the Feisty News for Women.